today, and we're glad to, to worship the Lord together. Amen? It is good to be in the house of the Lord. We, um, um, I want to thank you all for your prayers for me this week. Went through some tests. Everything came out great, and very thankful for that. And um, just, um, it's been, been a good week. The Lord has been watching over us and, and caring for us. So um, glad to be here worshiping with you today. Um, if you are our guest here, and if you are checking in online and have never done so before, in the chair in front of you or there on the, on the website, there is a connection card. And the connection card is the way that we stay in touch with each other. And so if you would be kind enough to fill out a connection card and let us know your information, we, we promise not to sell it to any, um, any kind of advertising agencies or anything like that. We just want to keep you in touch with everything that's going on at the Well Church. And so we are glad that you are here today. Thank you for, for being. It's, a, it's our honor to have all of you here to gather together with us today. So thank you for being here. Um, there's a lot of things that are going on. Um, first of all, um, I... I, I want to let you know that um, we are um, going to be opening up everything really soon, getting everything back going full blast, and we're in some need of some superheroes. And, and superheroes are people that want to volunteer one Sunday a month and during the second service for right now to, to work with our children and our youth ministry. And if you're interested in being engaged with that, there's a, um, a number that you can, or a, um, you can check with us on, the, um, on our webpage. And um, you can actually um, you can email at info at the well, And um, the second thing is um, it, it is very soon it's just a few more weeks until easter believe it or not isn't that crazy this this year is flying by and um as we start this we um have um some some things that we're going to do together as a church um as easter's coming out and so um our director of outreach and missions larry payne has a little bit of a message that he wants to give to you and so we're going to do that right now so if you'll watch the screens in the front morning I'd like to invite you to an adventure now, I know that's not maybe the sort of thing you're used to hearing from us at the well church of Kaipa but we believe that God is calling us to live an abundant life full of meaning and purpose and we don't have to wait for the world to get back to normal we can start right here right now beginning March 14th with 21 days of hope so what's 21 days of hope think of it as sort of a digital missions trip we're not going anywhere fancy or taking any safety risks but we're still on a mission to spread hope in our community we know that you can't fill other people with hope if you're not experiencing it yourself. So our mission at the Well Church Ukaipa is to bring hope to you and through you through during this upcoming Easter season. If you're ready to join this God-sized adventure into our community, text the word HOPE to telephone number 909-547-9757. That's text HOPE. Thank you and have a great day. Good morning. I'd like to invite you to... Well, Larry was so nervous during that, you could hear his heart beating through the... Um, <laughs> at first, I was checking to make sure it wasn't me. I was like, no, okay, I'm okay. So, um, but it was... Um, um, the, the 21 Days of Hope um, is, is essentially something that, that we're going to do to, to reach out to everyone that we know. And the way that you can be involved, if you text HOPE, the word HOPE, to 909-547-9757, you, you, each day for 21 days up till Easter, you will get a short little message of hope um, just to encourage you through the day on your way to Easter. So um, if you write that down, you don't have to do it right now. Um, um, you can do it later when Marcus is preaching. No, just kidding. Don't do it then either. No texting. But we would like for you to, um, to, to write those, um, to text. And, and, and what it is for, for 21 days before Easter, we'll be sending you a very brief little text message with a scripture and a word of encouragement for each day. So we'd like to invite you to, to join us with that. And there's some other things that we're going to do to reach out to our community during that time, and we'll be letting you know more of that information. Okay, that's all that we have for announcements. Um, let's stand together. And let's do our um, memory verse for the day. And um, this week's memory, this month's memory verse is from Revelation. And the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 17 through 18. Let's read together. Revelation 1, 17 through 18. 
Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Revelation 1, 17 through 18. And brother, would you lead us in prayer before we get started today? Thank you. This time that we have to gather together as your church, as the family of God, brothers and sisters here together to worship you. Lord, would you go before us as we worship you? We welcome you here, Lord. Would your spirit fill us, fill this place, open up our hearts and our minds to receive you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning. So good to be here with you all, and thank you for joining us online if you're online. We look forward to seeing you again soon, hopefully, too. But um, we're going to start out this morning with a song called Rejoice. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's sing to him. Come and stand before your maker, full of wonder, full of fear. Come behold his power and glory, yet with confidence draw near. For the one who holds the heavens and commands the stars above is the God who bends to bless us with an unrelenting love. Rejoice! Come and lift your hands and raise your voice. He is worthy of all praise. Rejoice. Sing the mercies of your King and with trembling rejoice. We are children of the promise, the beloved of the Lord. One with everlasting kindness, but with sacrificial blood, bringing reconciliation to a world that longs to know the affections of a father who will never let them go. Rejoice, come and lift your hands and raise your voice. He is worthy of all praise, rejoice, sing the mercies of your King, and with trembling rejoice. All our sickness, all our sorrows, Jesus carried up that hill, He has walked this path before us, He is walking with us still. Turning tragedy to triumph, turning agony to praise. There is blessing in the battle, so take heart and stand amazed. Rejoice when you cry to Him, He is your voice. He will wipe away your tears. Rejoice. In the midst of suffering, He will help you sing. Rejoice, come and lift your hands and raise your voice. He is worthy of all praise. Rejoice, sing the mercies of your King and with Let's let's get a restart there. (laughs) No sweat. Here we go. One, two, three. Love. 
every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise for who can stop the lord almighty our god is a lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh, every knee will bow before him the Lord Almighty. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. Sin of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion. Come a day when every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Christ is Lord. Nothing can stop him. Amen. Andrew, would you lead us, brother? stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Every knee will bow before him, church. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Before 
Satan tempts. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died. My sinful soul is counted free, for God the just is satisfied to look on Him and pardon me, to look on Him and pardon me. out. Behold him there. Behold him there, the risen man, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace, the King of glory and of grace, the King Himself, I cannot die. My soul is purchased by His blood. My life is hid with Christ on high. With Christ, my Savior and my God. With Christ, my Savior and my God. Father, our lives are hidden in your shadow. Lord, our lives are dependent on you. You hold us in your hand. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming and living a perfect and blameless life as the spotless lamb, the perfect sacrifice for our sin. We thank you for bridging that gap, and we thank you, Father, that you rose Jesus victoriously over death and that we now have a great intercessor, a mediator who sits at your right hand on his rightful throne interceding on our behalf. What a great thing that is, Father. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for calling us and revealing yourself to us, Lord. We pray now as we continue with our time of worship through our giving, Lord, that um, you receive all honor and all glory that is due your name. God, as we give, we are reminded of how you have provided for us, how you are faithful. And God, as you have been faithful, help us to be faithful with what you have given us. Help us to not do this, Lord, just out of a sense of obligation, but out of hearts full of worship and thankfulness and joy and gratitude for all that you have done. We give to you now, Lord, as an offering of worship. We surrender these tithes and offerings to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you're here this morning, you can give your gifts by uh, filling out that card in front of you. And if you're online, there's a banner with the different ways you can give. Let's keep singing.
There is no other so sure and steady. My hope is held in your hand. When castles crumble and breath is fleeting, upon this rock I will stand. Yeah. Upon this rock I will stand. Sing glory, glory. Glory, glory. We have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all. We raise the anthem. Our loudest praises ring. We crown him Lord of all. Sing us together, sing his kindly rule is shattered and broken. Your kindly rule has shattered and broken. The curse of sin, steering me. Our lives are hidden. My life is hidden neath heaven's shadow. Your crimson flood covers me. Yeah. Your crimson flood covers me. Oh, we sing. Glory, glory, we have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all. We raise the anthem, our loudest praises ring. We crown him Lord of all. We crown him. We crown him Lord. better than any highest mountain that we might find ourselves on. He's better than any trial or lowest valley that we might be in. Just like the man said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Let us today declare that Jesus is better and ask him to help us believe. Amen. Church, could we stand? Could we declare this together? sing this out in all my sorrows in all my sorrows Jesus is better make my heart believe in every victory in every victory Jesus is better make my heart believe let any come Jesus is better, make my heart believe. More than all riches, Jesus is better, make my heart believe. This is our song, our song eternal. Jesus is better, make my heart believe. And our song, and our song eternal. Jesus is better, make my heart believe. Sing it out. Glory, glory. We have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all. Glory, glory, we have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all. We raise, we raise the anthem. 
Good morning. It's so good to see you all. I'm, I'm really glad to be here again to speak to you. Um, they told me I did such a bad job last time I had to come make up for it. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, but it really is. It's such a great honor um, to be able to speak uh, again. And I would like to just start off this morning with a word of prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I just want to humbly ask you and your spirit to be here today, Father. Um, whether it be in the homes of the people who are visiting and, and watching online, whether it be here in this sanctuary, Father, and, and I pray that it be upon me that your word would speak and that you would soften the hearts of the listeners and that you would prepare people for change. And I pray all these things in your son's holy name, Jesus. Amen. So the past few weeks, Pastor Ron has been talking about following Jesus and what that looks like, and, and the importance of what um, we need to, to do to be able to serve him. And <clears throat> today I wanted to talk about just the next natural corollary, another just part of what our faith looks like as we follow Jesus, is sharing um, the good news of his salvation with other people. So I wanted to share some quick statistics with you guys. Um, about just what people believe in the United States of America. This is coming from um, a report that came out in 2016, and it says that Christians um, account roughly for 47% of our United States population. Um, and that number has unfortunately been decreasing over the decades. Um, Catholics account for roughly 20%, but unfortunately, nearly one quarter so 24% right now of Americans count themselves religiously unaffiliated, which means that they are either atheistic, they are agnostic, or they are um, a spiritualist. And this, this group, unfortunately, has um, more than tripled in the past 20 years. And so what my hope is, is to kind of go over how to teach, how to preach, and how to, how to share the good news with people in a way that ultimately reaches this group of people because they are rapidly growing in our nation. Um, they are the people who do not know the Bible, they don't care to hear about the Bible, and um, <coughs> we're going to have to take a different tactic to share with them in order to get the news across. Um, and so I just want to first touch off with the importance of, of why we even need to share the gospel. If you guys don't know, the gospel is just a biblical word that means the good news, um, that Jesus Christ came on the earth, that he died on a cross for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again three days later to prove that he could, to, could wash away all of our sins. Um, and that good news deserves to speak. That good news needs to be spoken today. Um, to all the people that we come in contact with, to our friends, to our family, to our loved ones, to that um, neighbor down the street, and to everybody that, um, that we even just come in contact with as acquaintances. Um, and my, my ultimate goal, my, my enforcement for this that comes from the verse 1 Peter 3.15, which as you may know says, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks to give the reason for the hope that you have. Um, but do this with gentleness and respect. There's a balance that we have to, to weigh when we share. We need to be bold in sharing. We need to be bold in, in reaching out and talking with people, getting uncomfortable. But at the same time, we need to not hammer it over people's heads and we need to do it with gentleness and we need to do, need to do it with respect. Um, I, I just think of the, the old adage that nobody cares about what you know until they know how much you care. Um, and that is ultimately going to be a lot of what we're going to be talking about today. 
Um, but let me ask you again, what is kind of the two main jobs of being a Christian? The first, obviously, is, <coughs> is to follow Jesus, um, and the second is to share Jesus with others. Um, and why do we need to share the gospel? Number one is um, on your notes and in, uh, should be above me, uh, because Jesus commanded it, quite frankly. As we know, in Matthew 28, verse nine, uh, 18 through 20, I'll just read 19, it says, therefore, this is Jesus speaking, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So he commanded it. It's an obligation that we each have as Christians. We can't go through this life calling ourselves uh, believers in Jesus and not share. But I don't want you guys to share and to just feel a weight of obligation. I want you to do it. I want us all to do it out of love. Um, And that's our second part. We should share the gospel out of a love for the other person. Um, Because the good news about what Jesus done is is the good news that speaks of love, doesn't it? Remember the the second part of the greatest commandment, Matthew 22, verse 38 through 39. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. Um, This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And (coughs) don't we have amazing hope with the, with the gospel, with the good news of Jesus? Don't we have forgiveness? Um, don't we have redemption, hope, patience, peace, joy, love? Um, we have the ability to forgive others, the ability to, to overcome addiction, the root of bitterness, all because of Jesus, all because of our faith in him and, and his Glory comes and he, when he does save us, when he comes and, and his spirit dwells within us, we become heirs of his promise. We become princes and princesses, like kings and queens, daughters and sons of his kingdom. So shouldn't we want to share that with everyone out of love? Um, a love to, to save that person, a love to, to bring that person and redeem them back to, to restore them to a relationship with the God who created them. Um, and I want to take a quick poll. For those who are online, raise your hands too. But if you would, raise your hands if you do have a desire to share Jesus with others. Okay, cool. So pretty much everybody in here. And I'm sure most everybody online. So I don't think the problem is, is the whether or not you want to desire um, to share the gospel but I believe that it's a different matter. May I ask, if you may raise your hands honestly, and again, those who are online, how many of you feel confident in sharing your faith? So about half as many, I would say, and I believe that's fairly fairly common. Um, And so that is what my primary goal is today, is actually to give you all some tools, some help, some guidance, um, to encourage you so that you would have more confidence and so that you would um, just be more bold in sharing and, bo- and so that you can have those tools to kind of handle whatever may come at you um, when you do share. And I just want to remind you all that we do have that same Holy Spirit inside of us that, that raised Jesus from the dead. That, that that same power, as the song says, is inside of us. So when we do proclaim, whether we go, are going through a difficult time, where, whether we don't know how to use our words, whether we, we don't know what to say, what to ask, uh, remember that, that at that time that we need to, I know that God will supply that. But let's be a little bit honest. Usually, usually, um, the, the Holy Spirit does not give us words or... or Or rarely do we know what to say unless we're practiced on how to do it. And so what I'm about to go through in a bit, I want to remind you guys that this should be training. This should be um, something that you practice in. Um, As weird as that may feel to you, as weird as that may sound, that really, in a lot of ways, sharing um, your testimony, sharing your witness, sharing the, the good news of Jesus Christ, knowing what that looks like and how to share and what ask, at what questions to ask, is, is something that we have to learn. It's something that we have to practice, just like any sport or just like any other um, 
any ability or skill that you would get better with it over time. Um, but I have one last question before we go. How often do we have an opportunity to share the gospel with others? And I think, personally for my own life, I kind of rarely have a, an opportunity to share. Just personally, I don't come in contact with a lot of, of non-Christian people. And I know that a lot of people, especially people at home, may be thinking the exact same thing. And I, I want to say that we need to push back against that and we need to push um, out into the world. Because unfortunately, the natural tendency of churches and ourselves in general are to, to tend to inward. We tend towards ourselves, the matters of the church. We tend towards our Bible studies, our group of friends um, that are Christians. We tend to our Christian movies, our Christian discussion groups, and Facebook groups, everything else that it might be. And what ends up happening is we start to shut out all chance of even coming in contact with people who aren't saved. And so my, my beloved people of this church, I, I want to to ask all of us that we would, we would begin to kind of push against that and change to actually reach out and get out of our comfort zone um, and to find people who are not saved, whether they're online that you're reaching out to, whether it's an old friend you haven't talked to in a while that you call, or whether it be in the communities that you, that you walk amongst the, when you're at the grocery store or that you buy from at the checkout, whatever it might be, that we would be willing to, to push out of that comfort zone and make that contact with people. So, out of, after saying all of that, I want to finally get into some of the real tools and the, the, the info to help you guys. The first, obviously, is prayer. Our first and most important tool in sharing the gospel with others is prayer. Just think about it. It is the, the first line of defense, is the first line of offense in, um, in sharing with people. It is um, praying and asking for God, for the Holy Spirit to, to come and, and do a work within their life and without, in ours um, really is going to help give you the, in, the courage and the strength to do so. It's gonna give you the opportunity a lot of times and, and most often it's gonna open their ears and, op and soften their hearts to be able to hear your word um, the, to what you do have to share. And so I encourage you guys to, to make a list of people that you know need to hear the truth um, and to make that list and to pray for them regularly. And I will, <coughs> I will tell you, you will see amazing things if you do consistently stick to that. I know that God honors that, that regular prayer for people and he will eventually give you opportunities to share. He will open up um, their hearts and you'll be able to have those opportunities. And I wanted to share a, a story with you guys. I've, I've forgotten the names um, exactly, but it's probably better I don't know the names because this is a real story. Um, but there was a, a young man, a young boy named Timmy that went to a youth group growing up. And he started um, in about sixth grade going to the middle school group at a church. And his mother was the one who let him go, but his father was the strictest of atheists. He did not want to have anything to do with God. He hated the church. He thought it was stupid, but because his wife believed, he allowed them to go. And he was actually um, a city official in the town hall, so everybody in the church, everybody knew him. Um, he despised the church in every way. And in the youth group, the, the youth pastor had the wonderful notion of telling them to, to share the good news, to share uh, and evangelize with people. And he asked them to make prayer cards, and they would write down somebody that they're praying for, and they would post it up on a wall every week. And every week, um, little Timmy wrote his father's name down, and it broke the youth pastor's heart because he knew that would probably never happen. Um, he was so adamant, he just knew that it wouldn't change. But Timmy did that, and he prayed every week, and he put his father's name down every week for years, until by his senior year in high school, his father came to church, and he heard the good news of Jesus, he heard the gospel, and he gave his life to Christ. And that's my hope is that you guys would remember this story and that you would know that prayer is powerful, and that it can change lives. So I pray that you'd consistently pray <laughs> for others. Amen.
Um, the next one I want to get into is um, some more tactics, some more abilities. Um, just kind of the first things that we need to do when we're making those conversations, especially with the, um, with the people who are not affiliated with religions, the people who consider them spiritualists or agnostics. And these people often don't care, they don't know, um, and they um, have very interesting notions about what we believe but often they don't want to hear it until we start asking more questions. We need to become very familiar with asking questions, a lot of really good questions. I call this pre-evangelism because you're not getting anywhere close to sharing the gospel yet, but you are really laying the foundations to be able to. Um, and these questions are just to open up, um, get the person to share about their life, um, something that doesn't create a barrier or a wall. Because when have you ever had somebody knock on your door and um, try to confront you about what you believe and tell you that you're wrong? And when have you ever like heard that and went, oh yeah, totally, I'll, I'll just switch. I'll be a Jehovah's Witness now. Thank you. Yep, good job. Um, no, but most likely we push that away and we're, we're um, disgusted by it. We're re we reject it very quickly. But if we ask questions, what, what do you believe? Why do you believe what you believe? Um, can I share what I believe now that you've had your turn? Asking just little things like that can really start to open up um, the person, get, them, the, get to know a little bit about them, and you can start to um, get a foot in the door, ultimately, to be able to share what you know is the truth and what is life-saving for them. And the next part of what I want to talk about that ties into that is we need to learn the skills of a craftsman. And I'm getting this from a book um, called Conversation of Conversational Evangelism. Um, but it had some really good ideas in it that I wanted to share with you guys that really ties into these questions that lead into um, sharing the gospel with people. And the first, um, the first job, the first craftsman that we need to learn the skill and trade of is the musician. As a musician, I must learn um, to listen for, um, I must learn to listen for false beliefs. Um, it's this idea that in the book they call listening for sour notes. When you hear somebody talking about their faith or why they believe what they believe, you, you listen in for those points that don't make sense logically, that, that if you bring it to the fullest conclusion, it just doesn't make sense. Those may be things like when people say, I believe all religions are the same. That's definitely not the case, so that's a sour note. Let's key in on that. Um, or if they say that um, no religion can claim to know the truth, that basically we're all just floating through this world and there's no real way to figure out, there's no evidence, there's no nothing, so you can't tell me what to believe, I'm just going to do my own thing, you do your own thing. That is what probably most people believe, and you may have encountered this, but that's a sour note. When you hear something like that, it just, that's definitely not the true. Um, so, the next ties into that. These each are consequential. Um, the next skill that we need to learn is f the skill of an artist. Um, and as an artist, we need to learn how to paint a mental picture um, to people, to the people who are lost. And so when somebody says that strange notion of there is no truth, there's no religion that can know that they're correct, you then ha should enter into it asking questions that bring up a mental picture for them. How do you know that you're right, that, that there's no truth? Because at the same statement that you say that, you, you can't know. So then if you're wrong, um, or if you don't know, then maybe there is some truth. Let's talk about that. Or all religions are the same. Really? How, how so? Have you studied every religion deeply? <laughs> Do you know that, that all of them teach very different things um, to, to be saved? And many of them, pretty much all of them will teach you have to do works, you have to complete certain tasks um, in order to get nirvana or in order to uh, reduce desire um, in Hinduism or Buddhism, whatever that might be. Um, and so we have to know a, a little bit more about these things and be able to ask these questions to kind of dive in and make them question themselves. And as they begin to question it, then they can realize maybe what I believe is wrong and then we can start having a real conversation. The next is 
um, I want to talk about the, as an archaeologist is the next skill, we need to learn how to uncover the barriers in a person's life. Every person, pretty much, who um, is not a Christian most likely has a barrier to believing. That may be intellectual, and you may need to answer their questions, show them how there's proof and evidence for the Bible more like more possible than they even could imagine. We have texts and, and verification and third party biblical evidence, extra biblical evidence that, that points to it. We have fulfilled prophecies written thousands of years before. Like what, what else do you want to know? Um, and then also to, to push back against it. There may be an intellectual barrier. Most likely though, they have an emotional barrier. Am I right? If you've talked to somebody, most people will tell you their barrier for not believing is because somebody hurt them, they had a bad church experience once, or they just don't understand how God can be loving and, and just and send people to hell. Those are the primary three big things. And so we really need to, to be willing to ask those questions, spend those, that time with people, and figure out what that barrier is, and try to address it as best we can. If it, if it is an intellectual barrier, then we study what we can, answer what we can, have another conversation later, and we try to, try to prove to them intellectually um, why the, the truth is what it is. If it is emotional, then most likely we need to, to really get into why they're feeling it, they're, the way they're, they are, why they're hurt, and, and really address some, some forgiveness. If it's a Christian that did something wrong, maybe we need to step in and just go, hey, I'm really sorry that they did that and Christians shouldn't have acted that way. Um, would you be willing to, to come back with me to, to church? Would you be willing to hear how, it's, how we're supposed to live? Because at the end of the day, right, we're, we're all broken people, not perfect people, and so we all do make mistakes, and sometimes it's, even when we intend really well, we've, we wrong people and we, we snub them, and it, it causes them to have an emotional barrier to Jesus. And so we need to, to find those, address them. Um, one of the things that, one of the ways that I like addressing it um, that's kind of not as deep and personal is a lot of people say, oh, I had a bad experience at a church. And you go, okay, um, so, so is that why you don't go to church? Yes. Um, so have you ever had a bad experience at a restaurant? Have you ever had bad food at a restaurant? Yeah. Well, do you still go out to eat occasionally? Yeah, I do. Then why don't you go to church anymore? And then usually they'll start to piece together, oh, not all churches are the same. And maybe some churches are better than others. Maybe I can actually go back to church and find a, find a new home. There's other ways, but that's just one example. Um, the final skill, the final craftsman that we want to um, learn from is the, the skill and craftsman of a builder. I must learn to build a bridge to the gospel. Once we've gotten kind of this far, we've, we've kind of addressed them, we've talked to them for a bit, maybe we've overcome some barriers that they have, maybe we've addressed them questions that they have, um, then, we can, then we can actually build finally to sharing the gospel. That's why I mentioned all of this is just pre-evangelism. <laughs> it's just getting to the point. But most of the time, this is the stuff we need to do if we actually do want to share. And so my next tool I want to give you is, is kind of a... a a part of also leading into that gospel, a part of building that bridge, um, but it's also somewhat sharing the gospel. And it's what I call the five plank principle, or what is called the five plank principle. And it's just a tool, just a reminder that if you can talk to people enough and get them to understand these five main points, then you're ready to really share the gospel. You're there. They, they understand enough that they can understand the truth. And the first point is that I'm accountable or responsible to live up to a standard. Most people don't even know that part. Most people in the world today think I can do whatever I want so as long as I don't hurt people. Um, and, soon, and if you can get them to a point of realizing that hey, there, there is a, I have to live up to a standard, there is a real standard in the world and I'm responsible for that, we're getting places. The next part is that usually comes right along with it is they can't meet up to that standard. That standard is perfection and let's be honest, we all make mistakes, we all do what we call sin, and, that and at that point we would introduce them to the idea that, hey, they're a sinner just like we are. And from that point, then they realize, hey, I, I can't fix it myself, I need an outside source for help. 
Um, and so from there, then we introduce them to the uniqueness of Jesus Christ's forgiveness, that he's the only one that can forgive, he's the only one who can, can save. So that's one tool. My next tool is actually um, a gospel sharing method for when you do really get to, to the point where you can share the gospel. And this has become really prolific. Some of you may know this, may, you may not. Um, this was started by a church out in the East Coast called North Park Church, and it's been really taken up by the North American Mission Board. Um, and they just handle missions from both um, in the United States and outside globally. Um, and it's just a really cool method called the Three Circles Method. It is in your notes page today so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, and at the same time, this is something that you would potentially learn to actually do. And it goes a little bit something like this. It says, when we start, we started, um, there is God's design. And he started with a plan. I mean, he cares for everything in our world. He, he designed everything to have a purpose, from marriage to um, how we treat money, to how we treat sex, to how we treat family. Um, all of that has a purpose and has a design that God made. But unfortunately, um, we all have messed up from that. We've made a mistake, and the Bible calls that sin, and it's led us into what we call brokenness. And that brokenness, everybody knows and experiences, it, it's often shame, it's often guilt, um, it's loneliness, it could look like um, abusing somebody else or being abused, um, addiction, whatever that might be. But when we do feel that brokenness, we often try to cope with it, we try to handle it by, um, by branching off into a bunch of different ways, and that's what those little squiggly lines are. Um, and we do that by getting a relationship that we think will fix it, um, we try to um, reach out into different um, self-improvement methods or just different religions or even we just try to be a better person and just white knuckle it and just I'm just going to do what I think is the best. Um, but ultimately we realize at the end of the day that that brokenness can't be fixed by just what we do. Um, and that's where we kind of lead into the third circle, the gospel. And <coughs> In leading to the gospel, we need to repent, which just is a biblical word that means we turn and change back um, away from what we were doing, and we instead believe in the gospel, which is just another biblical word that means the good news. And the good news is, again, that Jesus came to this earth for us, for our sins, and so that he could um, wash away um, all of our brokenness from our lives, and he lived a perfect and sinless life, and then died on a cross so that he could substitute that and allow us to be forgiven. And he was buried and then raised again three days later um, to prove again that he could wash away our brokenness and heal us. And that is where we kind of lead back into, we recover and we pursue God's design again. And when we come back, we, we get to live in God's design here in our life as best as we can, and eventually we will again live in that God's design in heaven. And so that's pretty much what a presentation of the three circles um, looks like. And what I encourage you guys to is to kind of learn this because really, um, it's really simple to, to know those three circles. It's really kind of simple to follow along, um, even in your head of just what that looks like. And in one short, I don't know what that took, two minutes, uh, people have a really good idea of, of what the Bible teaches about Jesus. And <coughs> the next point that I'm gonna go on is um, just an, another important tool that um, in sharing the gospel is your testimony. Remember that your testimony is important and valuable, that ultimately people can't refute what your experience is with Jesus. If you tell people, I was lost, I was crazy, I was, um, I was angry and I, I hurt people, um, I was bitter, I was broken, I was addicted, whatever it might have been, um, and then I came back, God rescued me from that, he redeemed me. Um, then we have the opportunity to, to kind of share what God did in my life and, and would you be interested in that as well? And testimonies can be very powerful. And lastly, my, my last little tool for you guys is um, the ABCs of salvation. So if you can't remember anything else and, you're, and somebody is like, yeah, I'm willing to hear the gospel, then I pray that you would remember the ABCs. And it's literally just this. It's admit your sins, believe in Jesus, and see, confess um, that Jesus is Lord. And that's it. That's as simple as that. Um, to help walk somebody through a prayer or whatever it might be um, that you get them to, to know and share. 
And finally, I want to encourage you guys to invite people to church. Um, like they said in, in uh, two weeks or, yeah, two, three, we- three weeks, I've lost my weeks. In three weeks is Easter. Holy cow, it comes fast. Four, okay, four weeks. I have that in my notes and I just, I thought I wrote it way too soon. Anyway, so Easter's in four weeks. We have the amazing text um, for the hope and the devotionals that we're doing for that. But at the same time, if you can um, pray for people and you reach out to somebody and you have the opportunity to share with them, but maybe you don't think you did a good enough job or you won't do quite a good enough job and you're still practicing some of these things, uh, invite them as well to our church because I know that we're going to do a fantastic job on Easter to also share Um, the gospel and give a really clear presentation from Pastor Ron for that. And I keep saying finally, I apologize. Um, There's one last bit. I want to let you guys know that that when you do share, um, that there is still a possibility of getting rejection um, and that people will um, potentially be rude, um, just spurn you, be be upset, not want to talk to you. Um, Can I let you know that that is okay and that (coughs) that is not your responsibility Um, for dealing with the the results of that for that person's anger um, and choice to to be mad at you. I know that um, in in the past few weeks when we decided as a church to reach out to a bunch of people and we made phone calls um, to people who've been to our church, who who are members, but maybe we haven't seen in a while or just people who um, visited once and didn't come back, uh, we, we had a bunch of you call, and some of you I heard had uh, bad phone call experiences. And I just want to let you guys know that, again, that is not on you. Any, any, of, any time you try to share or try to share the love of Jesus with somebody, and they um, do not accept that well, I, I, I recommend you act like the disciples did when they shared the gospel and somebody didn't respond well. They shook the dust off of their feet, um, recognizing and symbolizing that they didn't carry that burden with them. And they just went on and kept going, and they kept sharing. So I pray that if you do come across rejection, that you don't give up, but that you would keep pursuing either that person or just other people. Um, So thank you very much, and I I do pray for that for all of us. At the very bottom of your notes should be extra resources, um, just typed out in some bullet points for you. Um, There are extra books or websites or videos for you to look up so that you can practice this and become more well-versed. And that's all I have to say. So may I pray for us and then we will um, exit out with a, with a song. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for all that you've blessed us with today, um, just for your grace and your mercy. I pray that you would um, just have a, an amazing impact on the lives of all of these church members, Father. Um, all of the people who call upon you as, as Lord, I pray that you would touch their hearts and that you would embolden them and encourage them that they would share um, your love with all of those around them. And I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I, I, I've enjoyed hearing from Isaiah, and he's been um, our youth pastor for a, about a year um, and going through some really difficult times. And what a time to start being a, a young minister in the middle of COVID. And I am just so impressed by his perseverance and sticking with it and doing such a great job of leading the youth at our church. And one of the things that um, we want to do and recognize as a church is um, Isaiah's call to ministry. And um, one of the things that churches do for young fellows and who are called to be pastors is we can recognize them as pastors. And um, one of the things, one of the steps to being fully ordained is to become a licensed minister. And the elders at the Well Church, along with um, um, just the general um, consensus of everyone, is basically that Isaiah, um, the certificate here for licensure, It says, this is to certify that Isaiah L. Price, we have the same middle initial, it's very cool, has given, who has given evidence that God has called him into the gospel ministry, was licensed to preach the gospel as he may have opportunity and to exercise his gifts in the work of the ministry. And this allows him to 
um, with, uh, with a modicum of supervision to um, go out and to exercise his gifts as a minister. He can um, um, perform weddings and um, um, preside over funerals and um, basically carry out the work of the ministry. It's the next step towards being an ordained pastor. And so, um, Isaiah, we're going to have the elders come up here um, to the front, and um, we're going to lay hands on you. And we're going to commission you. Um, I'd like to give you this certificate. Let's go down here and stand on the floor. One more. One more. One more. Okay, all right, there. Okay, there we go. And, and um, see, I'm, I'm a tall guy now. Um, but we're going to have Steve and Bob and um, um, Pastor PJ. Are you going to come up here or are you going to stay back there, bro? He's going to stay back there. Okay, so we're going to have these two young elders here um, lay hands on you, and um, I'm going to pray while we do that. So let's pray together. Father, we, we want to thank you for Isaiah, and we thank you for his call to ministry. We thank you, God, that you have anointed him with your spirit and that you have filled him and empowered him to carry out this life of ministry. And so, Father, as he goes forward from this day as uh, Pastor Isaiah, we just ask for your strength and your courage and your power and your blessing on his life and his ministry. Thank you, Lord, for um, how you call us and how you lead us. And thank you, Lord, for Isaiah and his ministry in our midst. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. We're going to sing now, and then you'll be dismissed. Church, let's stand. Let's uh, sing one last song together before we uh, get out of here. In all my sorrows, sing it out. In all my sorrows, Jesus is better. Make my heart in every victory Jesus is better make my heart believe in any comfort In our souls declaring, Jesus is better, make my heart believe. In our song, in our song eternal, Jesus is better, make my heart believe. Glory, glory, we have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all. We raise the anthem, our loudest praises ring. We crown him Lord of all. We crown him Lord. We crown him Lord of all. Amen. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Church, let's go forward out from here proclaiming his kingdom, preaching his message of salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you.